Alrighty. This is Sand Shark. This is a HPA uh, semi-automatic kinda blaster. Uh, the semi-automatic function of this is there is a trigger here with a gear here that connects to the ram that closes the breech up in there. So if I pull this back, you can see it closes the breech. First prototype. I haven't even fired it yet. I'm going to do that on video. Um, this uses a Cosmic Nomad HPA core from Roboman. And this does not have its own breech mechanism like a super core would. Uh, so this kind of geared trigger ram setup is my attempt to make it semi-automatic without uh, needing more airlines or electronics or anything. Um, I'm also working on a blaster that uses a air cylinder um, on uh, recommendation of Roboman. Uh, so that is a pneumatic cylinder where you put air in one end and it pushes out a thingy and then you put air in the other end and it pulls it back. Uh, so that would be a better semi-automatic function, but I wanted to see if this would work. I wanted to test out some gears, you know, play around with them. So there's a gear about this big. It's a three to one gear reduction ratio. Uh, right now, due to the slop in the prints, uh, the tolerances, it doesn't quite match three to one. So I can pull this back, this trigger is two fingers because it's a pretty heavy trigger pull. And this is supposed to be up here, so it's not quite making the entire distance. It should be like that, instead it's like that. Which means that I don't think the O-rings on the tip of the ram are fully reaching the breech. But we'll find out once I stick air in it. So we're gonna get some air. And we're gonna try this out. We're gonna see if this functions. So right now, I've just got an airline coming out the bottom, which goes directly to the MJVO3 valve right there, which is hit at the end of the trigger pull. And then that goes up, out the side, over, and down to the air tank up here, which has a turnaround, which goes up and then shoots the air out the front. This is my regulator. So this is at 100 PSI. And I can just, I can also stick my finger back here to fire the core uh, without any darts in it. So it does fire. And my regulator keeps loosening itself off of the uh, bottle, so I'm gonna tighten this on. Now, if I pull the trigger, the ram will close up there, and then at the rear of the trigger pull, it will fire. Okay. Interesting. So there is a lot of air coming back. Oh, it, it loosened again. really weird. All right. Let's see if this fires. I don't know if the dart's going to come out the barrel because that ram isn't fully closing, but let's find out. No. Okay. It does have a skinny breech. Nope. Nope. Ram is not closing enough to fire. All right. So I can solve that by just holding it hand forwards with my finger. Alright, let's try that. It is kind of working now. Alright. So I'll hold forward the breech. And it worked. Alright. Got some darts here. All right, so I paused the video and I took off the top cover. 
just some screws, took that off, and I took out the uh, sprocket. It sits right about there and spins around. Actually, it would be this way around. Spins, wait, no, no, no. What? Yeah, yeah, this way. Spins like this, around back and forth. And there's just a gear rack on top of the trigger and a gear rack on the bottom of the ram. Let me see if I can pull back the ram far enough to uh, show you it. Here we are. As you can see, there's a gear rack on the bottom of the ram. And without that gear in there, the ram is just allowed to slide freely back and forth. So now I can uh, test this without the semi-automatic function, so just manually operated, which might be the way that I uh, keep this project going, because I'm not sure if this sort of thing is the correct solution to this problem for an HPA blaster, um, especially with an air cylinder uh, setup being possible, which I didn't know about when I began designing this. Um, I didn't know that it was like within a cost range. It's like $5 for one of those air cylinders, plus some extra fittings is more money, but it's not that bad. Um, so I might just do that sort of setup instead of doing semi-auto with a big kind of clunky two-finger, like really heavy geared trigger. Um, but we can test the blaster itself, the firing components, and then uh, if I decide to abandon semi-automatic trigger fingery thingy, then I can just switch to that uh, super easily without changing a whole lot of the other of the rest of the blaster. So let me scoot my chair back, and yeah, let's let's see if it's loaded. It's not. This is really nice. That it has these giant sort of viewing windows. Uh, really nice to be able to look into the breach, and you can see, now that the top cover is off, load it. That works really well. So the firing components seem to work quite well. Um, as with most blasters, or all blasters, with an MJV-03, you need to pull the trigger really quickly or else the uh, performance doesn't work. Uh, the MJV-03 air valve needs to be closed relatively quickly in order to uh, fire correctly an HPA core like this. So, something that I might be able to do with all this extra space that would no longer be used for the gear mechanism uh, could be I could make a uh, mechanism to pull the trigger back uh, a certain amount and then have the valve trigger a lot quicker. Um, something like that could be interesting. Because you don't need all of this space if you're just using this little last bit at the back uh, to fire the actual uh, thingy. It is firing quite well now. I'm just grabbing the head of a little M3 screw. So this is incredibly uncomfortable, but it does fire really well. So the breech mechanism up here is like spot on really good. Um, it's the back half that needs some work, which is okay. First prototypes are meant for trying out new things. And if those things don't work out, try something else. So overall, I'm relatively happy with this. Um, being able to just rip out this mechanism, which was fun to try out, and I will probably use in a future design, um, a gear reduction, sort of like this. Um, being able to rip that out and then still make a blaster out of the rest of the thing, it's really nice. So I'm going to uh, probably develop this as a manually operated little... Um, thingy, which should be pretty nice once it has, you know, 
ergonomic uh, considerations for that mechanism as opposed to a two-finger trigger pull thing. Yeah, relatively happy. So this is kind of an example of how especially first prototypes can sometimes not work at all. Um, this has happened a few times before to me, so I'm kind of used to it at this point. Uh, working on a project all the way till first prototype and then realizing that the kind of basis of the project doesn't work. And that's okay. Um, by doing stuff like that, you can learn new mechanisms, uh, new techniques and whatnot, and still get some sort of experience or positive thing out of the design. Um, so for example, for Sand Shark, I'm going to be reusing that geared trigger pull mechanism uh, probably as a pump action, uh, putting a pump action on the geared component to make a lighter primed blaster or something like that, a springer. Um, and then Sand Shark itself, the HPA blaster, it's super easy to just change it to use a bolt action that you manually move back and forth and then have a nice smaller trigger, make the grip a bit smaller, bring the back of the blaster in a bit so it's a bit smaller overall. It's super easy. So I'm just going to do that. Uh, and that way I get both things out of the blaster that I wanted. I get an HPA blaster that I can use and probably release. And I got to try out the new uh, gearing mechanism, which I've been wanting to try for like more than a year now, maybe two years. Um, and I've just never had a project that needed gears in that sort of function um, manually operated as opposed to like an AEG, uh, which I also used gearing on. But... This is the first one where I've manually operated a gear rack in a blaster, and I like it. So now that I've been able to test it here, I can use it in future designs, which is nice. So even if this prototype is a failure in using that mechanism in a blaster like this, I wouldn't call it a failure in a broad sense. Uh, it successfully tested the concept in an HPA blaster. And it also successfully let me try it out and use it later. And it successfully made the rest of the HPA Blaster really, really good. Uh, so once I change that one bit, the trigger mechanism and the breach operation, then this should be a home run, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, that's all that I've got. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, bye-bye.